Next job you've got to do is cut out your llama shapes from your template and pin them onto the llama felt that we made earlier and then cut them out one llama at a time and I will show you how to assemble them. Before we start assembling our llamas, make sure you have your foam under your work all the time and the felting needle is very sharp. So this is Llama A and Llama A I've put his head in place by just poking the head onto his front. Then I put the saddle on and same, same thing and then last of all his back legs. This is Llama B that I've cut out of the white pre-felt we made earlier. I've added the head on top of the other head just to give it a bit more depth. And the saddle and the foreleg that is behind the llama. And I've again attached it all by poking with the felting needle. This is Llama C and again I've attached the saddle and the head and also the front leg that is behind the other front leg which is cut out of the dark brown and again just attached with the felting needle. With Llama D um, I first start with this shape here which is hit the bottom and I put on the back legs attached with the needle and then I put the saddle in place and again attached with the needle and last of all I put the white front of the llama and plus I add the head on top as well and all of it this is poked in place with the needle. I've cut out two baby llamas, one in brown and one in white, and I've again added the back leg, one in dark brown and one in grey, and plus added the extra head to give them a bit more uh, depth as well, and uh, attached with the felting needle. If you'd like to have some mountains in your picture, they are optional. I've got two parts grey to one part white, and a really small amount, and I'm going to pull them apart, then rejoin them. I'm trying to mingle the colours up like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist the ends like so, and then I can cut them in half. Spread out this part and then you don't really want that little bit at the top. We can put it down over your blue-grey area. I also do add a tiny bit of the grey just at the root of your mountain. This mountain is going to be a little bit smaller. Now that the background's finished, I've put the llamas in place. I've made sure there's between two and three centimetres between each llama because they will get closer together as we felt and also keep them a little bit away from your edges. They're about five centimetres up from the bottom of your picture. When you're happy with the arrangement of your picture you're now ready to get the whole thing wet. Just be careful when you sprinkle, you don't move things. 
and also make sure it's absolutely saturated. Don't worry too much about the edges because as we press down they will get wet. I put the thin plastic on top and I've now been patting for at least 15 minutes. It's really worth doing this. I'm going to peel the thin plastic back to show you how things have actually really knitted together. It's very loose but it's, it's really working. And I'm going to show you another little trick that we can use the, the fibres at the edges. I'm going to turn the whole thing over like this, peel back the bubble wrap and then we can just fold just those loose edges, don't take it too far, pat it down like that and it's really important that you unpeel this edge before you do the next edge, so it's one edge at a time. I folded in all the edges um, and now I'm going to put the bubble wrap back on, bubble, bubbles on your work and then we'll flip it over again and I'm going to turn it this way and I'm going to start with the rubbing. So you can add your, thick, your soapy water and rub just as you did before. Be quite gentle at first and you could do two minutes like this two minutes it's like that, two minutes like this and finally two minutes like that and then we'll take a look at your work. After you've done your eight minutes rubbing, give it a little pinch and see how it is. It's probably still going to be a little bit spongy and soft but you should be able to pick the whole lot up and turn it upside down. And then I suggest you repeat the rubbing that we did earlier. So two minutes in each direction and it should really be ready then. And then you can rinse it out, get rid of the soap and put it somewhere to dry. When you have finished your background and llamas, and your work is dry, we can start to define the edges and use the felting needle. Always make sure your foam is under your work. So we will just poke inwards to put any stray fibres back into place. Also, if we felt at this angle with the felting needle, we can create the jawline for the llama. Um, on Llama A we have two eyes so I've balled up a little tiny bit of the dark brown and I'm going to put it in here. You can create a bit of a dimple by just poking where you want it to go first. Don't poke continuously in the same place, keep it fairly loose. Also, don't worry too much if the eyes aren't quite equal because we can pull the curly fibres over the eyes and it won't become so obvious that they're not exactly the same size. We can also do exactly the same with the nose, just making it a bit broader and then we can cut some ears and I'll show you how to put those on. So I've done exactly the same with the nose, just made it a little bit wider and slightly oval shaped and I've cut two ears out and I'm just going to poke them into place. Like that. And later on I'll put some curly, give it a curly fringe. But before that I also want to define this area here between the two legs. So I've poked quite a bit in a line and then I am now going to put a very thin bit of the dark brown and we can just poke it into place
So now we can put the tail in place. When you're using the curly fibres, don't pull them apart, cut them, otherwise you'll pull all the curls out. So this is where, if you've got eyes and, and you feel they're not quite right, just bring the fibres down a little bit further over their eyes and it makes them look very endearing. So Llama B and her baby. So we just tidy up the edges and to give the baby a little bit of definition just poke in here like that and I'm going to show you how to put feet on your llamas. So take a tiny amount of the very dark brown, you don't need much, just tear it off and a little bit like the eyes, just quite loose and then we're going to make a very small rectangle that's a little bit angled. Um, llamas have very small feet for the size of them. I've given Llama B an eye, she only needs one, and a slightly smaller nose and a little fringe. You can do exactly the same with Baby Llama, but it just has to be even smaller. So once you decide where you're putting the eye, make a little mark and then you can just put it in. And the fringe will help if, if you feel your eyes not quite right. And you could, you could get away with no nose with the baby llama. With Llama B, we can put a tail in place with the curly fibres. And I have also defined by going in this direction the back leg of the baby llama and given it a very small amount, a very tiny ear. And then we can, I've cut some tiny bits of the curly bits and we can just put them on in place. You need very little to do this. And we can also give the baby a tail as well. If ever you're uncomfortable with what you've done, you can just pull it out and start again, like so. I'm just going to open this out very slightly. It doesn't need very much. Llama C, I have done the same as the other llamas. I have defined the edges with the felting needle, I've gone in in this direction to help define the front, the two front legs, and given um, a, a curly fringe and a curly tail. And now I'm going to put a little ear on the baby llama. I've also I do put the white the llama on the brown the white baby on the brown llama and the reverse so that you can see them clearly and same again we can just put a really small eye in place of this baby like that, balling it up and finally that baby will have fringe and tail and again I've defined the two legs Llama D, I have defined all the edges as with the other ones um, and the only difference on this one is she does have two eyes um, and two ears but I have 
created a little bit more definition on the jawline by running a very thin thread of the dark brown just on the jawline. And last of all, if you'd like to decorate your llamas with collars, so just get a thin amount of the dark brown and create a nice arc around the base, the lower side of the neck and poke it in and then we can use some of the colours that we used in the saddle, just pull very small amounts out and very loosely just poke them into place, keep them a little bit fluffy. You can even mix the colours together a little bit. Like that. And you can create ear tufts as well by doing exactly the same in their ears. And if you don't like them, you can always pull them out. When you've finished needle felting, that means your picture is finished and ready to mount. I use double-sided tape to put it on a board and then they look lovely in a box frame. I do hope you've enjoyed watching this tutorial and um, enjoyed making your llama picture kit and if you have, please I love getting photos and feedback to see how you've all got on and if you'd like to try another kit, all my kits have got their own online tutorials that accompany them, you might like to try my Scottish kit with Highland Cattle. All my kits are available from www.artfelt.co.uk. Bye!